All right, hi everyone in this NEAT revision series 2. I'm calling this as an opportunity because now you have time to increase your scores which has come because of the postponement. Let us see the first question. This is a angiography because some dye still is in the vessels. This is a right angiography. In the center of the retina, there is a flower petal appearance of the dye which is going in a radial pattern that is like a hyperfluorescence, like a flower petal appearance. Now this is cystoid macular edema. Which of the OCD findings suggest cystoid macular edema? That is increased thickness of the central retina with cystic spaces. That is the answer. A option is a separation of the neurosensory from the retinal pigment. That is central retinal detachment can be seen in central serous retinopathy. Separation of the entire 10 layers of retina from choroid that is seen in pigment epithelium detachment and a hole in the central retina is a macular hole. So this is cystoid macular edema due to inner blood retinal barrier break. You should know what are the causes, which drugs causes this, what are the conditions and what are the management of cystoid macular edema. Depending on the cause, you should know that. So answer is B. Now which of the following features are not present in child of congenital simple ptosis? In simple ptosis, there is a levator muscle maldevelopment. So there is poor LPS action. LPS muscle is responsible for eyelid crease. So there is absence of eyelid crease, decreased levator action. And this ability to close eye normally is because of seventh nerve. Orbicularis muscle that is normal in ptosis. So D is also correct. But there is lid lag sign present. What is lid lag? If this is eyeball. This is eyelid. When we look down, the eyelid follows the eyeball because levator muscle relaxes in down gaze. In congenital simple ptosis, the LPS muscle cannot relax, cannot contract, cannot relax. So when the child looks down, the eyelid remains behind. It is lagging behind. That is lid lag sign present in down gaze. That is seen in congenital ptosis, not absence. It is present in congenital ptosis and also in thyroid eye disease. Lid lag sign is seen in down gaze. Remember this. Third question is this a device, a very, very important device known as Goldman Applanation Tonometer? It's an applanation device. It is not portable device. It is a small device mounted on slit lamp. And a fluorescent dye is used under cobalt blue light. It is a contact procedure based on Imbert Fick law. The principle is applanation tonometry. How much the area of the tonometer, how the diameter of the tonometer should touch the cornea in applanation? You should know that 3.06 millimeter is the diameter, not the area. Area will be maths. We are good in maths. 7.36 millimeter square. It's a gold standard. Goldman said that his name has gold. So it's a gold standard tonometer, most reliable tonometer, best tonometer, but not a portable test. Similar to this, a portable, like a portable Goldman is a Perkins tonometer. That is portable, but this is mounted on slit lamp. So that is the answer of this question. <clears throat> now diabetic patient who has been diagnosed with mild NPDR. No ocular treatment is required. Only systemic control of diabetes is required. Every one year follow up is there. Uh, every uh, six months follow up for mild to moderate NPDR. A question was asked in the group. If a patient of diabetes has no retina changes, then annual checkup. If very mild NPDR, annual checkup. Mild to moderate NPDR, six months checkup. Severe, very severe NPDR, two to three months follow up of the retina checkup. But no ocular treatment. For PDR, the ocular treatment is required depending on what is there in PDR. If there is a new vessels in the elsewhere or optic disc, pan retinal photocoagulation. If there is a traction retinal attachment, vitro retinal surgery. If there is a vitreous hemorrhage. You wait and watch and then take out the vitreous if it is not resolving by vitrectomy. But cystoid macular edema can be seen in any stage of diabetic retinopathy. So if even if mild NPDR comes with CME, then the answer is anti of injections. Now this brown layer is a melanin layer, brown pigment that is a retinal pigment of epithelium. And see this is the nucleus. Three level nucleus are there. This is a... So this is... RP layer, so this is vessels choroid. So here it is vitreous. This is ganglionic cell, inner nuclear, outer nuclear. Because they have nucleus. In between the ganglion and the inner nuclear, there is a inner plexiform. In between the inner and the outer nuclear, there is an outer plexiform. 
this is the nucleus of the rods and cones this contains the nucleus of bipolar amacrine horizontal cells molar cells and rods and cones inner segment outer segments are in the rods and cones layer and this is the last layer that is rectal and pigment epithelium which layer is this the axons of the ganglion they are nerve fiber layer which ultimately forms optic nerve so here the answer is inner nuclear layer now fluorescein dye is used in serial test that is to check the leakage of the aqueous in incision or wound leak you put a dye over eye dye dalo aank mein if the dye is coming out uh, if the aqueous is coming out the dye will become diluted that is serial test positive jones dye test serial uh, fluorescein dye is used but it is external for uh, nasolacrimal duct or lacrimal uh, drainage uh, obstruction it is not used here with cobalt it's only the dye is put over the eye and see the dye is coming into the nose or not in the cotton in the nose no cobalt blue filter is used cobalt blue filter is used with fluorescein dye fluorescein dye when you use a slit lamp here also retina angiography fluorescein angiography is uh, done it is put in anti cobalt vein it goes to heart and retina choroidal vessels navziger test is for the qualitative examination of proptosis when you stand at the head end of the patient and see whether the which eye is having proptosis a qualitative method of knowing proptosis fluorescein dye is not used over here now preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis three differentiating features i tell in the class if the patient has proptosis eyeball is coming out inability to move the eyeball of thalmoplegia or the vision is decreased due to optic nerve involvement of proptosis then it cannot be preceptal because it has gone beyond the orbit septum or eyelid edema can be there in preceptal or bulb solid is anything but other three features if they are present you rule out preceptal cellulitis you should know a preceptal cellulitis is the first stage of orbital cellulitis second stage is orbital cellulitis third stage and the fourth stage are intraorbital abscess or periosteal abscess and the fifth stage is cavernous sinus thrombosis now there are some rings in the stroma of the cornea this is intracorneal ring segments also known as intacts or icrs that is pmms rings in the stroma of the cornea in keratoconus to stabilize the cornea in non progressive keratoconus it is a repeat question previous question as well it is this is animation a real picture can also be asked that is done in keratoconus the doctor observed a white sometime in the question uh, by pure logic you can answer the question doctor observed white abnormality in the pupil maybe it's leukocoria white reflex but of a child mature senile cataract cannot be in the child that is the answer even mature senile cataract is seen as whitish but that is this is a child right that's why the answer is c what are the differentials of uh, leukocoria you can predict the cause of leukocoria by predict p phpv persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous r retinoblastoma retinopathy of prematurity e end of thalmitis d dysplasia of retina i incontinent of pigment eye c congenital cataract is the most common cause of leukocoria coats disease t toxoplasma toxocara and the last question i think many people must have made mistake because they don't read carefully this is any everyone should know this is a ct scan radiology question floor fracture maxillary bone fracture that is the weakest point of the orbit tear drop sign a is correct infraorbital nerve anesthesia can be there factual question diplopia can be there due to ir involvement iu involvement yes but not due to palsy due to restriction of the uh, ir and iu muscles mostly inferior rectus muscles and d if you should know this palsy palsy means the muscle is paralyzed nerve is paralyzed and the muscle is paralyzed here the muscle is stuck so patient will have difficulty in looking up because it is a restrictive squint not a paralytic squint and d is also correct not of your level d but you should sometime in the in the options they will give you some options which you had no idea but you should know out of three options if you know one absolutely correct or the three you can rule out the three that's why that also you can solve the questions the mcq is a game of your exam is a game of mcq is a game of three not four if you know three fourth is always the exception answer that's it 10 questions answer of this question was c because it is a restrictive squint not a paralytic squint 
that's a blowout fracture i hope you know forced duction test forced duction test should be positive or negative here positive if you try to move the muscle you won't be able to move because it's the restrictive squint that's the 10 questions i hope you have done well thank you for listening best wishes